Now, to understand operant conditioning, you have to believe in a universal principle applied across all species. And that principle is that every behavior, right, that is everything you do, all the choices you make, are followed by a consequence. A consequence is our key word. And the consequence is going to decide whether that behavior is going to be repeated and strengthened or stop and weakened. Take, for example, this dog that's sitting, right? And this dog is sitting and maybe shaking its paw. Why? Because the consequence, it is getting a treat, right? And we can apply that principle to humans as well. Why is this little girl doing chores? Well, maybe she's getting some stars, right? She could use those stars to buy a toy later, right? So behavior is going to strengthen because of the positive consequence. Now, what if something is really bad, right? What if the dog is jumping on the couch and we don't want that? Well, we can punish the dog, right? Maybe we spray the dog with water, right? And the dog learns not to do that behavior. Or maybe the little girl is talking back to her parent. She's not listening to instructions. So what do we do? We block iPad time, right? No screen time. And this is the heart of operant conditioning. It is a type of learning where behavior is influenced by what? By consequences, right? Whether they're good or not good. Now, even though we have two different species, human and animal, um, we can make a lot of connections, right? If the dog is going to sit for getting a treat and the girl can do chores for getting stars, anything that increases the likelihood of that behavior occurring again is called what? We're going to call that reinforcement. Okay, let's repeat that again. Anything that encourages a behavior to be repeated, in this case, a treat, a little star there, uh, a check mark, and stars is going to be considered a reinforcer, right? We want to increase the likelihood of that behavior occurring. And same thing with our water spray, right? We want the dog to be less likely to jump on the couch. We want her to less likely to throw or tantrum, so we take away screen time. So we want to decrease the likelihood of that behavior occurring again. What do we call that? We call that punishment, right? This is the universal truth. It doesn't matter what species. We have reinforcement and we have punishment. Now, there are different types of reinforcements as well, right? What are the things that are going to increase the behavior of a species? Well, if we think about just the, you know, the things that we need innately, food, water, air, shelter, right? These are called primary reinforcers, right? Things that we are wired from birth uh, to want. Uh, to, I mean, why do we work? We want money, right? Money. Anything that we learn has value uh, is considered a secondary reinforcer. Right, so we have primary uh, and we have secondary. And even things like praise, right? Doesn't need to be physical things. Me telling my son or my students, good job, right? I really like what you did, right? These would be really good reinforcers. Uh, what about punishers, right? Things that we want to decrease the likelihood of a behavior occurring. Well, it could be things like um, scolding, you know, yelling, right? Please don't do that. This is going to hurt somebody or it's bad. Uh, putting somebody in timeout, right? That'd be a pretty good punisher. Um, or even things like ignoring, right? Ignoring somebody uh, might make a behavior less likely to occur again, right? So that's the fundamental principle of opera conditioning. We have reinforcement and we have punishment. Now, where did this all come from? We want to turn to B.F. Skinner. Now, his real name is Burris Frederick Skinner, but nobody wants to walk, walk around saying Burris. So instead, we say B.F. Skinner. B.F. Skinner was a famous behavioral psychologist, right? That's the universal principle about behaviors and consequences. And in his mind, you can't scientifically study what happens up here, right? I could tell you I'm happy, but how do you know? I could be lying, right? It's very subjective. So Skinner thought the only thing you could study scientifically was behavior, right? Behavior and its consequences. And to study that, Skinner created what's called the operant chamber or Skinner box. And what he'd do is he made this chamber, uh, he had a rat in there, uh, or possibly a pigeon. There's some lights, some sound, a little lever, lever to pull, and maybe the rat gets some food. And Skinner learned a lot about animal and even human behavior uh, from this little box. So for example, he learned that complex behaviors, right? If you want to train an animal or human, um, it has to be broken down into little bitty um, steps. This is called shaping. Right? This is one of the fundamental terms uh, in operant conditioning, which is shaping. So what is shaping? You gradually, step by step, reinforce behavior, right? reinforce, increase the likelihood of a behavior occurring until the target behavior is achieved. So let's think about this together. Imagine we want the rat to do a complete 360 turn and then it gets a treat, right? Or that's like the target behavior, okay? So it does a big spin, it presses the lever, 
and it gets a reward. So how are we going to train a rat to do a 360? Well, you do it gradually, step by step by step, right? So for example, maybe the rat just turns its head, right? It just turns its head. It just does a little boop. What do we do? We reinforce, right? We give the rat a yummy treat, okay? Then what happens? Well, right, step by step by step. Then the rat happens to turn just a little bit more. Maybe it turns 90 degrees, like a quarter turn. What do we do? We reinforce, right? You have to take these complex behaviors and reinforce it step by step by step. Now we got a little bit more. What do we got? Maybe a half turn, right? A little 180. And the rat's like, oh my God, I realize kind of what's happening. As I turn, um, I'm getting more treats, okay? And finally, right, after all of this is said and done, uh, the rat turns and the behavior, 360 degrees, the behavior is occurred and the rat has done what we wanted to do, right? So this we call shaping. Um, and by the way, each one of these little steps, do we know what those are called? A successive approximation, I'll put SA. Okay, so each one of these steps is called a successive approximation until the target behavior is achieved. This is one of the big things with Skinner. So imagine, for example, I'm teaching my son how to brush his teeth. I can't just say brush your teeth, right? He's young. So what do I do? I shape. He, puts, uh, he holds his toothbrush. I praise him. He puts toothpaste on the toothbrush. I praise him, right? Every step of the way, I reinforce that behavior until the target behavior is achieved and we've achieved um, shaping, right? Now, other things Skinner's learned from this kind of operant chamber is we call reinforcement uh, discrimination and generalization. Do we know the difference? Well, discrimination is when you can single out a particular stimulus, okay? So imagine we have a, a little pigeon in Skinner's box, right? What we're gonna do is train the rat to do something. We are training the rat to only peck at a triangle. So it sees a triangle, it packs at the lever and it gets food, right? And if it does that, and it does not, I repeat, does not peck at the circle or the square, the pigeon has achieved discrimination. It knows one shape from another, right? It knows that it only gets a reward with this shape and not the others. Thinking about examples in your life, right? Think about your phone, right? It has all these alerts on it. It's got weather alerts and notification sounds and all these different sounds, right? but you only pick it up maybe when it's a text message sound, right? You can discriminate the sound to know when the big consequence is there, right? When the good consequence is, of course, receiving a text, right? So we as humans experience discrimination as well. But we can also experience generalization in which we respond to similar stimuli, right? So maybe this pigeon is trained to peck at a brown triangle, right? It only gets reward at a brown triangle, but it starts to peck at other triangles, a pink triangle, a blue triangle, right? It can't discriminate or distinguish between triangles. It thinks everything is going to lead to reward. Thinking about my son again, um, he got allowance for cleaning his bedroom, right? He finally realized something. My bedroom is like the kitchen. The kitchen is like the living room, right? I can clean all of the rooms in the house and maybe I'll get an allowance, right? So he's generalizing, realize that maybe all of these things can lead to a positive outcome, right? So a lot of opera conditioning is based on the theories and studies of B.F. Skinner. All right, lastly, these are huge topics within the field of opera conditioning. There are different types of reinforcements and punishments. Okay, so let's stay together and make sure we understand this. The first thing, what do we remember about reinforcement, okay? Let's look here. Reinforcement means we want to give some increased behavior. So let's do a little arrow. What are we doing? We want that behavior to continue. So anywhere we see reinforcement, we want to arrow up. We want that behavior to continue. And what about punishment? We want the behavior to decrease, right? We want that behavior to stop, okay? Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Whenever you see the word positive and negative, that doesn't mean good and bad. Let me repeat that. Positive does not mean good, negative does not mean bad. Positive means we are adding a stimulus to the situation, okay? So positive means what? We are adding a stimulus. It doesn't matter whether it's punishment or reinforcement, we're adding something. What do you think negative means? It means we're removing something, we're taking something away from the situation. Once again, negative means we take something away. So positive, negative reinforcement, positive, negative punishment, we're adding, removing, we're increasing, we're decreasing behavior. All right, so here's our scenario. I'm a coach, right? I'm a coach of a soccer team, okay? And this is one of my players. 
I want to make sure he does really well on the field, right? He's really trying hard during practice. Well, how can I use operant conditioning and BF Skinner's ideas to make sure that he's a really, really good soccer player? Well, the first thing I could do is I can use positive reinforcement. I can add, for a positive, a pleasant stimulus to increase behavior, okay? So let's take, for example, um, that our player does a lot of shooting, right? He does a lot of passing. Um, but at one practice, he does a lot of passing, okay? And I'm like so happy he's passing, okay? So what do I gotta do? I gotta add a pleasant stimulus. In this case, I'm gonna praise him, okay? Praise him, which makes sure that he continues to pass because he always shoots and I want him to pass now, right? So what do I do? I add the praise, which makes him more likely to pass. This is positive reinforcement, right? I'm positive reinforcing his passing through the use of praise, right? Great job, John, right? Really happy with you. So I'm adding something to our situation. Now, we can also negatively reinforce our athletes. Now, this is a confusing term. This does not mean punishment. I know you see the word negative. This is a good thing. I'm not trying to punish somebody. I want you to do something continuously, but I'm also doing something. Negative, remember, remove. I'm taking something away you don't like, but I still want to increase your behavior, okay? So what could be our example? Um, let's say our player is putting forth a lot of really good effort, right? A lot of really good effort, right? And I tell the player, hey, if you keep doing good effort, guess what? You don't have to run laps at the end of practice, okay? So what am I doing? I'm removing something they don't like because who wants to run laps, right? So no laps at the end of practice, okay? If you continually work hard with effort, okay? I am negatively reinforcing the effort by taking away something they don't like, right? So I'm taking away the laps, something unpleasant, but I wanna make sure they keep having good effort. And this is negative reinforcement. Remember, it is not punishment. I wanna increase their behavior by taking away something they don't like, right? This would be like, um, you know, a child cleaning their room, not because they're a good child, they don't want to be scolded at by their parent, right? They wanna take away the aversive stimulus, which increases their behavior. All right, what about punishment? Positive punishment. We are adding something unpleasant to decrease behavior, right? I want you to stop doing something. So my, my guy right here, he's not doing well. Okay, so what is he doing? Um, he is doing too much talking in practice, right? Stop talking. I want you to hustle. I want you to have a good effort, right? So what do I do? I'm gonna add something they don't like, which will hopefully make them less likely to talk. So what I'm gonna do? Guess what, 20 push-ups. 20 push-ups, okay? So let's think about this in a sentence, positive punishment. I'm adding push-ups, which makes you, punishment, less likely to talk in practice. Positive punishment, you're adding something to the scenario. By the way, does this look familiar? Positive punishment. I'm giving water to make the dog less likely to jump on the couch, right? I'm yelling at somebody to make them less likely to do something, right? I'm giving my student a detention to make them less likely to come tardy. This is positive punishment. All right, last one, negative punishment. I'm taking away, negative doesn't mean bad. Remember, negative means I'm taking away something, in this case, pleasant, to decrease behavior. Okay, so what are this, what's the person doing? My player, oh, they keep arriving late. Okay, they're arriving late to practice. Okay, I'm not happy about that. So how do I take away something uh, that they don't like? Guess what? Do you like water breaks? I bet they like water breaks. But because you keep doing something I don't want, you don't get a water break. You can watch the players have a water break, right? I'm taking away something that you like that's pleasant to decrease behavior. So I'm taking away your water break, you can watch from the sideline, to make you less likely to come late to practice, okay? Um, negative punishment could also be, I'm gonna take away your iPad, I'm gonna take away your cell phone, hey, you came, ham, came home past curfew, I'm gonna take away your car keys, right? So the biggest thing to remember is positive means you add, negative means you remove, reinforce, you want to increase behavior, and punishment, we want to decrease or weaken behavior. This is operant conditioning. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe. Leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.